We're back to the main menu now, and there's a lot of information to explain. First off, this line graph on the left. This graphs the creature's progress. The y-axis is the creature's distance, which is also fitness. The x-axis is generations. Right now, there's only one. The red line is the median distance of the 1,000 creatures. It essentially tells you how far the typical creature of that generation traveled. You can also see the median's exact value, negative 4 millimeters. Wow, that's pretty bad. That means more than half of all creatures went backward. Next, the thick black lines are every 10 percentiles. That means the top thick black line is the 100th percentile, then the 90th, 80th, 70th, and so on, all the way down to 0th. The thin black lines are single percentiles, and they're only shown for the outer 10%. You can see how 80% of all creatures in Generation 1 fall within this tiny range of about plus or minus 0.3 meters. Also, because there are 1,000 creatures, every percentile is 10 creatures exactly. So that's the line graph. On the right, I can see previews for the best, median, and worst creatures of every generation. The median creature of Generation 1 essentially has a fitness of zero. Below the previews is a histogram, which essentially shows the same data as the line graph, but in a different way. And finally, in the lower left, we have an area chart showing species populations over time, out of the total 1,000. I haven't explained how creatures are categorized into species, but it's simple. You just take the creature's number of nodes, and then the creature's number of muscles. That's it. For example, a creature with four nodes and nine muscles is part of the species S49. From the beginning, we have seven major species. Currently, species 5-6, aka the hourglass, holds the plurality. Now let's move on. What will happen after 10 generations of evolution? After just 10 generations, almost 90% of creatures now move forward. That's quite an improvement. In Generation 2, the plurality moved from S56 to S33, aka the triangle, noted for its simplicity. But then, in Generation 4, the plurality moved from the triangle to S45. Why? Well, we can look at Generation 10's median creature, who also happens to be S45, to see how this species moves. With two leg-like structures, the folded paper became the most common creature from Generation 4 all the way up through Generation 10. However, the leader of Generation 10 is still the hourglass. I don't know why though, because half of its body just seems to be dangling there, holding back the creature. Whatever, we'll just see what happens next in the following generations. Whoa! The best creature just had a breakthrough, and it's an S45 creature again! Let's see how it moves! Okay, now let's go to Generation 20 as fast as possible. Some crazy things happened in those last 10 generations. For one, S56, the hourglass, took back the plurality for just one generation in Generation 14, before giving it back up to S45, the predominant species. Second, the median distance is almost as high as the highest distance from Generation 1, which means that creatures are speeding up quickly. Third, you can see a divergence in the histogram. There's one peak with all the healthy creatures, and another peak that's still at zero. Those are the offspring who, by random chance, received a horrendous mutation that prevented them from moving forward. They're probably gonna die. Finally, it's now clear to see that some species, like S44, are going extinct. It's cause squares are flimsy building materials. They had a considerable population in the beginning, but couldn't compete with the better creatures of today.